This is Desert Homestead Prepping. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. I figured I'd have you guys join me for a little ride. I'm going to head off to the big city, see if I can pick us up a water tank. I found a good deal on a 2,500 gallon water tank, um, at least for our area. It's a uh, it's priced at about $1,900. Everything else that I've seen around here is like $2,500 or $3,000 between that range. So this one tank um, seems to be a really good deal. So I got the truck all warmed up and I'm going to head down the road. Just figured I'd bring you guys along with me and kind of chat along the way. So while we're driving, I just kind of figured I would maybe explain a little bit to you guys about who I am and why we're, uh, we're doing things the way that we are doing it. Like the rest of you guys, I've watched lots of YouTube videos. I've, you know, I've read all kinds of articles just trying to understand what it's going to take. But when it comes down to it, the only way we're going to know is when we actually have livestock, when we actually live on the homestead and are gardening in our area. And like I've said before, we live in a very unique area um, where we have a hard time actually finding information about how to do these things here. So anyway, I just figured I'd kind of give you guys a little bit of history about who I am and where I come from. So I grew up in this area, in northern Utah. Sure, we had our our issues and our family growing up and like, you know, doesn't everybody, but that's not the point. Um, the point is, I, I didn't really grow up in a family where we had a farm or we really had much of a garden. Sure, my, my mother had a garden in her backyard that she would uh, kind of tinker around with but we weren't we never really understood the details of what it takes to have a full-on homestead so on top of that as I got into my teenage years I really rebelled um, I got into drugs you know breaking the law getting in trouble um, after I I turned 18, my drug abuse became very serious. In fact, I was I was addicted to methamphetamines. Um, it was so bad that I was actually using needles and shooting up. Um, it was a it was a very difficult time in my life. Um, very much shame and regret that I have from. Uh, that time in my life but ultimately what happened was the last time that I was in jail which was over 20 years ago I came to know Jesus Christ the Christ of the Bible and uh, and it was at that time that I actually found power to set me free from the drugs and the sin that I was trapped in um, it was just amazing. It was the power, by the power of Jesus Christ that I was made right with God again through his sacrifice. And, and it was through that redemption that my life was transformed. So anyway, um, that's my history right there. Um, I, I ran around with criminals and uh, drug addicts. That's, that's what my life was. For the last 20 years, I just was trying to figure out how to stay sober, how to rearrange my life, you know, to live in obedience to, uh, to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, how to organize my family. I mean, it, it wasn't until like seven years ago that I realized we were, we were going in the wrong direction. Yeah, I got the drugs out of my life. Yeah, 
us. Um, things were, were going much better for the stability of my family. But I realized America was falling apart. And uh, that we were heading into some scary times. And that's where the idea of this homestead came from. So from then on, we've been trying to prepare for the collapse of America and, you know, to have a place to go in case everything falls apart. And not just a place to go, a place to go that's going to be stocked. It's going to have everything that we need to be able to survive with food, supplies, resources, you know, all those things. So that's that's really where the idea of this came from so given that history I'm basically trying to explain that uh, that I have no experience in homesteading uh, raising livestock and uh, but I I know something's coming in fact I think we all know it now I mean but I knew back then seven years ago something was coming I mean people thought I was crazy back then because America was in a, a pretty good place for the most part now a lot of people come up to me and say man you were right I wish I would have been getting prepared for, for what's what we're all falling into right now but even though we are prepared in many ways. We have a lot of food stored up. We've got bug out bags and multiple routes and abilities to get to our property if something happens. We know it's still going to be extremely difficult to try to survive. And the, the one key element that we're missing is experience. And the only way that we can get experience is if we actually lived there and had the livestock, had the garden going, you know, we're farming and, and raising that livestock. Um, but unfortunately, about the best we can do is make sure that we have every, all the infrastructure put in place. Um, and, and I get it, That's that puts us you know, miles ahead of many other people throughout America that don't even have that. But I know that the experience is going to be vital. I mean, knowing what you're doing is the difference between life and death, between being well fed and starving. So, uh, so I have that that concern as things are happening. figure out right now and, and the best thing that I can think of right now is to pick up this 2500 gallon water tank and we're gonna we're gonna mostly bury it in the ground we're gonna set up our rain catchment to be able to run into this tank and uh, we'll be able to have water storage to be able to get us through the winter um, and that's that's critical because if you don't have water you don't have life I mean that is the essence of what it takes 
to be able to survive. I mean, I get it. We got the three, the three core, um, the core necessities, which is water, food, and shelter. So, I think we're pretty well set up, but if we're going to be able to sustain livestock, then we're going to have to have water in the winter to be able to make sure that that our livestock has all that they need to drink as far as chickens and pigs and and sheep so that's where I'm heading right now I'm heading into the city found a good deal on a water tank the reason why I'm buying it right now is because we're heading into winter I mean it's it's toward the end of November uh, prices are just climbing with everything and on top of that this is the time when these kind of things like tanks and, and various you know gardening items go on sale so I'm gonna take advantage of that I'm gonna buy this tank now because because it's on discount so that I can save myself 500 bucks because if I wait until I'm ready to use it next spring it's probably going to be a thousand dollars more five hundred dollars more but on top of that not only is the tank going to be more expensive in the spring but with the way that the supply chain is breaking down it may be twice as much come springtime I, I don't even know I mean we can see the fuel prices are going up. And this is a plastic tank that's used from, you know, it's made from, from petroleum, from oil. So I anticipate that the price of this tank is just going to get more expensive the longer I wait. So we're going to bite the bullet. We're going to go buy it. And uh, then we're going to go from there. So I'll keep you guys updated. So yeah, I'm just about to the store, and I'm going to get this thing loaded up, and, uh, and we're going to go from there. plenty of rainwater to be able to keep this thing full um, like I said the main problem is you know freezing so having a water cistern is pretty pretty important and we don't have to have a huge amount of water I mean Sure, we could use a larger tank, but we, we just don't have a whole bunch of money to to sink into larger tanks or, or a bunch more. But I do believe with 
with the precipitation we have, this will get regularly replenished throughout the year. All right, got the tank back home, sitting in the driveway, all ready to go for the next trip out to the property. So there's still gonna be a lot more that's gonna go into this project, obviously. We're gonna have to dig a hole. We're gonna have to run some, some tubing that's gonna go underground to reach to this. So still plenty more that needs to be done. This is the easy part, picking it up and putting it on the trailer. There's so much that we can think of um, looking at how things are arranged. I mean, we sure do wish that our homestead was closer to where I work, closer to where, you know, the community is, where our kids go to school. Um, it's really difficult to just run off out there when we have so much going on here. Um, you know, hindsight's always 2020. We wish we would have been able to buy something closer to where I work and where the kids go to school so we could live on our homestead and be dialing in, you know, really our strategy and how we how we do things and how we work with with livestock and gardening. But unfortunately this is this is where we're at and you know the cost of land closer to the community is is just so high. I mean it's it's way beyond anything we could have really afford you know anything we could have purchased with with my income you know we've tossed around the idea of moving somewhere like Missouri um, seems like there's a lot of homestead channels that are out there but you know we've really put so much work into this and uh, you know my life is here I know these mountains I know the desert um, I've lived here all my life it's really hard for me to to think about just giving that up and I have a really good job here and so it's really kind of scary to just you know up and leave so as it is we're just gonna keep on plugging away so as always keep us in your prayers you know especially pray that that we'll be able to have wisdom and understanding the Holy Spirit will guide us in a direction that is going to be right as we work out the details of preparing this homestead. We appreciate you guys. Catch you in the next one. God bless.